rolls for the last one. Yeah, she should be able to have three. Have a good for you. Where do you need them? It's our house. He's doing a PV. Okay, you ready? Cyclone Yasi shows no signs of weakening, is maintaining its intensity as a Category 5 cyclone. Uh, and, is, uh, st and is still expected to begin to cross the coast around midnight. The crossing of this cyclone will take some three to four hours. So we are yet, uh, many of you will be starting to see images on your, on your television screens of very, very high winds, uh, trees uh, coming to horizontal positions. Uh, this is only the beginning. We have another two hours before we see the full force of this, uh, this cyclone's power and that full force will then be maintained for at least three to four hours. So much of what you're seeing is the very early uh, signs of the impact of this cyclone. We are starting to see uh, a rapid escal uh, escalation in the number of uh, houses losing power. It's now reached 89,000. Uh, more than half of those are in the Townsville uh, and Ingham area, and the Townsville CBD has now lost power. Uh, we believe that that means that uh, a significant number of evacuation centres in Townsville will now be without electricity. Can I clarify, there is a data on uh, the uh, website that indicates that uh, the wave buoy at Townsville that records wave heights uh, has recorded a wave height of 18 metres. Uh, what uh, I'm advised is that what has actually started happening at that wave buoy is that the waves are breaking over the buoy, which means that it is not able to accurately measure. It is literally being turned upside down uh, and 18 metres is not an accurate reading. The readings go automatically onto the website. So while it says 18 metres, I know some people are reporting an 18 metre wave at Townsville. This is not accurate uh, and people should disregard the, the uh, readings that are now showing on the website. Uh, this buoy is in a location where waves do not normally break. Uh, however, because of this cyclonic activity, uh, waves are now breaking over it and false readings are occurring. 
However, we do expect to see very strong storm surges and some of those will be in Townsville. We're now seeing on the other areas where uh, tides are being accurately measured that those tides um, and those, uh, those water heights are climbing. We've got a number of points at which they have now recorded their highest uh, tide of the year and have now gone slightly over. So we are, beginning, we are seeing the beginnings of the building of that uh, storm surge that we indicated would build up over a three-hour period. So we are seeing that happening, but it is only just starting. So can I just say uh, reports of an 18-metre wave in Townsville are not accurate, and I'd uh, just uh, caution against uh, taking uh, material straight off this website now because uh, they, the measuring machines are now in extreme conditions that they've never experienced and unlikely to be accurate. Uh, I might invite uh, the, commission, the Deputy Commissioner to say a few uh, words he's followed up on that uh, complaint that we'd heard late earlier before. Thank you, uh, Premier. Yes, I have had uh, further information in relation to the caller at Port Hinchinbrook. Uh, it, it's a really unfortunate situation. Uh, that person uh, is with five other people. All of them are apparently in their mid-60s. Uh, they had chosen not to uh, evacuate. They have been advised to go up onto the second storey of the apartment block they're in, which is the highest part of that, uh, that block, and to uh, bunker down. Uh, it is really unfortunate um, that perhaps uh, that they had not taken the advice that had earlier been given them, um, and they are now bunkering in place and to see this storm out. We know that this is a storm surge area, so there is going to be water... Uh, and I've been advised that that water will come up at least to the uh, the floor of the second story. Is that the only threat yeah. to them at the moment? They're not uh, they're not in danger of their dwelling being blown apart. Or this is a, um, a, a a destructive storm. Um, there is going to be a storm surge up to the top of the first story. They're on the second story. Um, they who knows? Indication why they ignored the warnings to get out. Um, I have some advice in relation to that, but uh, I'd, I'd prefer to have that checked out before I provide it. Have there been any other calls for evacuation? Um, not that I'm aware of at this stage. Uh, some of their relatives are suggesting they weren't told. Um, there, there are six people, six adult people. Um, we have been making these warnings through you, the media, for how many days? Uh, we have been putting out EAs, emergency advices, through the uh, Telstra and Telecom uh, system, uh, the communication system to SMSs and home phones, hard lines, uh, for a couple of days. Are you fearful there are going to be more cases like that? I'm absolutely sure there will be. Uh, we are going to... Uh, the officers had made arrangements to call back to check these people, and that while they still can, while they still have communication to those people... Uh, they will continue to call them. What's the latest on the wind strength? Uh, we're still expecting to see winds of 290 kilometres an hour and, and perhaps stronger. So we are talking about uh, extreme and destructive winds uh, that, is li that are likely to prevail for a number of hours uh, um, over the communities that uh, will experience them. So we are still to see the full force of this cyclone. It is still at least two hours away and we do expect it to become more extreme after that point. So... Uh, we are still in for the worst of this uh, and uh, it'll be very difficult after that point uh, to get much information until morning comes and we can start to assess what has happened overnight. Have you had any reports of significant damage at this point? Not at this stage, but uh, we are very conscious that there are many places where uh, we now have no electricity. Uh, we won't necessarily know if people have lost our phone contact, uh, so it's not going to be an easy situation to get an accurate assessment of uh, as we go through the night. Premier, can you just um, reiterate uh, the exact places that were evacuated, all of Cardwell? Uh, well, I'm advised by the, uh, I was advised by the council uh, that, uh, that, that the entire area of Cardwell uh, was an evacuation area and certainly as I under they understood that they had evacuated all of it. So there may well be some people who made a decision to stay, but uh, the council had made every effort and indicated that it was a town that they uh, were seeking to evacuate the entire town. And Port Hinchinbrook, where these people are located, is at the southern side of uh, Cardwell. 
and you're not able to say exactly what, uh, you know, in terms of uh, them refusing to, uh, to evacuate, you're not able I to don't say have, that. I do not have that information at the moment. Um, I, I have some information, but not, I, I want to have that checked out before I make official comment about it. At the very earliest, would it be lunchtime tomorrow before you could attempt to physically help them? Um, certainly, that's the estimates at the moment. Um, obviously, we have to wait until the area is safe to go into, and that's going to be when the storm has passed, and people can get into it, depending on uh, road conditions and destruction in the area. And that sort of timing would assume that either the roads were open uh, or that uh, helicopters were able to get into the air and get in, which will depend on things like uh, not only wind strength uh, but other conditions such as clouds. So uh, we can't assume that uh, we'll be able to get in as, at midday. That's certainly what we'd be hoping and that'll be the earliest we reasonably expect uh, to areas like this. But there are any number of conditions that could combine to make that impossible. Have you had any... Uh update on the uh, transmission power at, situation. at this stage, uh, we haven't seen any loss of transmission towers, but as I said, we are still two hours away from the kind of force that would uh, lift a transmission tower. These towers are built to cyclone strength. Uh, they've never been tested at this level before, uh, and in Cy Cyclone Larry, of course, we know that uh, six of them went down. But we haven't reached anything like that strength of uh, wind power yet. That's uh, still two hours away, and then it will prevail for some three to four hours. So there is a lot uh, yet to be tested across the whole system. So, Ruth, Premier, in general terms, we're saying to people in North Queensland, be prepared to stand on your own two feet for a couple of days. Uh, we, we have been saying for a couple of days now to the people of North Queensland that uh, they need to prepare for the worst case scenario and that might mean that they have to be self-sufficient for a couple of days. We will do everything in our power to minimise the time that people are without uh, assistance, but that will not all be in our control. Uh, it will depend on conditions, whether we can get helicopters up. It will depend on how badly damaged roads are and how quickly we can get some kind of vehicle in there. We will use whatever vehicles we can lay our hands on and uh, the Army may well be able to assist, but it will depend on those conditions. And some level of self-sufficiency. I don't want people to think that they will just get up tomorrow morning and everything will start uh, clicking in. We need... Uh, the, I can't sugarcoat this for people. Uh, it's going to be a very tough 24 hours and for many people it could be a tough couple of days. And are uh, evacuation centres coping uh, as well as they can at the moment? All the reports, uh, we have uh, senior police uh, and uh, other authorities at every one of these centres. All the reports that we're getting is that people are very calm, uh, that uh, they understand the magnitude of what the authorities are coping with, uh, and to date everything is going as well as could be expected in what uh, I'm sure people will understand are fairly uncomfortable conditions. So people are being patient with each other, and I commend them for that and thank them. Uh, they have a long uh, wait ahead of them, and uh, these sort of conditions must not make it any easier. Uh, this will be the last uh, update that uh, the Deputy Commissioner and I will do this evening. Uh, we will make available information of any significance that uh, arises overnight uh, and make that available as quickly and as publicly as we can. Uh, we will return to regular updates as soon as uh, we can tomorrow morning. Uh, as we close this update this evening, uh, I say to all of those people who are still able to receive these broadcasts, whether it's on radio or on television, uh, we are waiting anxiously with you. Uh, as uh, we close tonight, we know that uh, the long hours ahead of you are going to be the hardest that you face. Uh, we will be thinking of you every minute of every hour between now and daylight. Uh, and we hope that you can feel our thoughts, that you will take strength from the fact that we are keeping you close and in our hearts. Uh, we look forward to seeing you safe and well tomorrow morning.